Bona ziua, bona tarda, welcome. This is B2A, Business to Audience, the way we bring filmmakers, producers, actors and actresses from the European audiovisual to the audience. And this time is our pleasure to have filmmaker Palme d'Or in Cannes in 2007, Christian Munju. Welcome to Barcelona. And we couldn't do that in the, under this new format without the collaboration of Media Desk Romania. And in the other side, making questions this afternoon for all of you, Valentina Miu. Good afternoon, Valentina. How are you? Buenos dias. Very happy to be with you. So I will go for the first question, which is, um, in a way, the, it's been named like the new Romanian wave. But how you feel like holding that that role that you never look for that i mean it's a label that somehow came from the outside at that time because it was a kind of a fresh at that time type of making movies and i remember porumbuyu and and puyu and and so many but after your palm door let's say that started a little bit earlier but you didn't ever look for that how you feel responsible of something that never was planned like for example the manifesto from Lars von Trier in Denmark, to, to put as an example. How do you think about it? Actually, I think that we all felt very, very responsible towards each film that we were doing. And even if we were aware at some point that we share some common views about cinema, we never thought that uh, that kind of a manifesto is needed because what was called the Romanian New Wave never came from uh, people gathering into a room and deciding how to make films. It was rather a way of um, being very responsible towards uh, our way of understanding cinema and reaching the audience. And I think we were perceived as a wave and as a generation because we were pretty much people who started working at the same time. All of us, we started making films after the year 2000. We benefited from a good context in which we had a new cinema law in Romania. And at the beginning, there was a big solidarity among these people in this group. And this also contributed to us being perceived as, a, I don't know, a generation and a movement. And then there's something about realism. I think that realism was somehow the common element which connected the films together. And we have to say this, that the Cannes Film Festivals was, was the element connecting the, film, the films together because this label came after um, all these directors uh, had made their debut in Cannes with one uh, film, maybe the second film or the third film. So overall, we uh, generated this feeling that it's not just a couple of filmmakers coming from the country, but there's a movement. And there was a movement and it was very stimulating for all the other directors who followed to try and keep the same standard. And for a while, that was a very good motor in which people were trying all the time to match the expectations of the audience. Which, in order to have that cross-border appeal of the new wave, Valentina, what do you think about it? Go ahead. Well, I was thinking about um, the circulation of European films and uh, how important it is for media, especially through the uh, distribution schemes. How important do you think this is? And has it has, uh, I don't know, an impact on your filmography? Um, I was not aware of this mechanism too much when I produced Four Months, Three Weeks and Two Days because that was still a film produced. It was my second film and it was only produced with uh, local support. But it's true that the moment when the film was sold in Cannes after the Palm Door, uh, this support from media um, was very helpful in the sense that the film was bought to, I don't know, more than 60 countries, and most of them were relying on this kind of help. And that became something that um, followed me for all my films. If I'm proud of something about my films, I'm proud that they are being released theatrically in a lot of countries, so people can discover them in theaters. And for this, it's really crucial that this support exists. It's a way for this kind of smaller films in countries with languages which 
are spoken only locally to reach audiences somewhere else in Europe, in the world in general, but in Europe with the media support. And whenever I was going and having Q&As wherever from Portugal to Estonia and from UK to Greece, it felt that, you know, this is how uh, the local audience got to know what we were trying to pass. And my feeling was that uh, it was a big support to communicate also that the films that I do, the film that we do, the films that we do as a Romanian new wave, are not just local. They are they were always having this kind of broader audience in mind and any kind of, of directed support for the films to be discovered in several places was really very important from the beginning. Which brings us to the what I said before, Can loves you. Uh, it was it's I mean, it's amazing. It's a match point in your career because out of 2,500 movies, in your second movie, you already get the Palme d'Or. But it's not just for four months, three weeks, two days. It's that you got as well in subsequent uh, years, you got the, the best director, Kotsekwo, and as well, the, screen, uh, the best screenplay, at least. And uh, it's like uh, Baccalaureate, it's called The Exams. And then you got Beyond the Hills. And as well, uh, the last one I saw last year, RMN. So it's a match point. So how important is in your career, not only because you are part of the new wave, blah, 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 in order to keep developing what you want to do as a filmmaker and as a producer? I was very lucky, to put it this way, that I was always screening my films in Cannes. Even my first film was somehow in Cannes. It was in uh, Ken Zen Realizateur. Uh, at that moment in 2002, I didn't even dare to send the film to the big Cannes festival because I thought that I was too, too much a freshman. And there's something connected to, to the Cannes Film Festival, which is very, very helpful. It's this blend of glamour and stars, but f together with their need of finding fresh voices. And to be honest, it was career shaping, not only for me, but for all the directors in this Romanian new wave, because it brings a lot of attention and, you know, it matters a lot for a film how it's going to be received from the beginning. And there's something magical I have to say about Khan that, you know, for 10 days you feel that film is the most important thing in the world. Of course, it's not, but it's good as a filmmaker to have this feeling at least for 10 days. And it's such a big community of, of, of people interested in film that they stop you on the street and you talk to them and you have a very direct feedback on what you do. And this is very important because we should never forget that finally, I don't know, we make these films for an audience. And the better you understand your audience, the better you are going to make the film somehow. It doesn't mean that you need to adjust them to the expectations. It means that you trust that the audience is as intelligent as you are, and you can be, I don't know, quite personal and fresh and radical in your approach knowing that you have the support for these films to reach film buffs from a lot of countries. So you are always considering who's watching the films, the audience. Um, what do you think, Valentina, regarding the audience? I'm thinking about film education, um, um, a subject that is very um, close to media support also. And I'm thinking about uh, its importance for um, for our cinema also, and how um, the directors balance entertainment and European values in order to get prizes and worldwide recognition. <laughs> in a way, it's, it's a delicate balance, but I think it matters in, in terms of cinema, European cinema. I think that what's, what's important as a filmmaker is to always remember that you need to speak about things that you know well and there are things that you can plan but of course you cannot plan everything um, what matters is to make a film that would be uh, rewarding first of all for you in the sense that if it's ethically correct for you and you consider that it's a way of communicating honestly with the means that cinema offers to you it's surely going to be honest enough for the audience and the audience is going to follow. And, you know, from this perspective, uh, one important thing that I discovered 
uh, while making these films is how important it is to have some help to release these films as well. Because for a long while we had a lot of uh, focus on producing films and on finding money to produce the films, but you know, it's as important to make sure that the films reach an audience. And along the years I got this support in several ways from the European mechanisms in which we were able to communicate these films even in I don't know, tinier portions of the countries where the local network of cinema wasn't, you know, too expanded everywhere. And especially back home, we were always creating uh, a parallel network in which we were bringing the film so that the audience can discover it. Even if uh, it was a small community with no theater, we always uh, tried to find some support and pretty much organize a screening, screening just for these people there because at the end, we shouldn't forget that, uh, you know, you make these films for, for an audience. And if you go there and if you support the screening with your presence, you will find out that these people are very capable of understanding what you wanted to say, that they will find that the story is uh, passionate enough, but it always helps if you are there. If you are there and talk to them, they will understand more, not only about your film, but only also about this need of getting I don't know, acquainted to watching different kinds of film genres, not only popular films, but also films coming from different countries with different rhythms, with different problems, because a lot of these problems, if they are very human, are going to regard them as well. And they are going to understand that, you know, we have more in common in countries uh, which uh, speak different languages, and cinema is a very good vehicle of showing this. Which you said a minute ago, you have, to do, you have to explain things about things you know well. And brings me another, I know ahead of time what, for seeing your answer, but we are now in a very quick, quick, quick type of movies where, talking about the freshness of the new wave Romanian years ago, that it's not, not no new wave and not, but it's fresh. That now, nowadays is about of special effects, editing, music, and, using maybe tricky, 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 tricks, 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 which it's too much of innovation. People are looking for like, um, in French is épaté les bourgeois. So, and you were still honest to your fresh stories, isn't it? You, you, were, you were more, you were not, you were not, I'm saying, I'm putting the question, you are not, let's say, not saying no to the new narratives or the, te the technology, but you are not for the tricky part of the entertainment Disney, Marvel oriented, isn't it? I think that what matters is that we are wise enough to preserve this diversity. And there's no point for an European director to do something that, you know, the mainstream does already. We need to offer an alternative to mainstream. But what we do and what I'm trying to do all the time with my films, I don't think that art house films should be long uh, and boring. I don't think this at all. I think that if you are a good director, you can make your film with, uh, you know, uh, a material and with things that could happen to anybody, but it should feel like a mainstream film. I like thrillers, I like surprises, I like a very interesting rhythm and passing uh, forward in this, uh, advancement of narrative, but I don't use the means that mainstream uses. First of all, because uh, this is very stereotypical. It belongs to the efficiency of the mainstream. And, you know, we are European filmmakers and we respect a lot the grammar of cinema. We went to film schools and we understand that it's not just about being efficient. It's about respecting the means that you were given by this new art and trying to expand the way you can use them. So together with making films and telling stories, we were always investigating the new possibilities of using this means. And this, this, this curiosity was always coming from this kind of art house films, while mainstream is about efficiency. They know how to use them very well, and I don't have anything against watching a very nice a uh, film on Friday evening when you're tired, but we shouldn't format everything in the same way. 
the freedom relies in diversity and we need to make sure that we preserve this diversity, especially in Europe. There's a pressure now, as you know, there's a pressure of formatting everything, of considering that everything is content and you have access to a lot of this content which looks pretty much alike, but it's good uh, to have an alternative always. And freedom relies in the capacity of also economically supporting people to express fresh ideas in their own way. And this is something that we gained, I think, together in Europe, the capacity economically of supporting these voices so that it's not just the market regulating everything to be efficient. What do you think, Valentina, regarding that diversity? Well, I'm thinking of development. <laughs> The fact that one of the, the most important areas for media, especially in low capacity countries, is uh, media support for development. And um, of I'm thinking also of, of um, the sources of inspiration when, when you develop a project. And of, also of the impressive filmography that you've had. So congratulations. And your perfect cast. How do you do it? <laughs> is it a magic um... formula? I, I always need to, to start from some sort of a pre-existing story, either a story that I know personally from my life or somebody has told me as in four months, three weeks and two days, which was something that I could relate to very well because I lived that period and I knew precisely what I was talking about. Later on, I think that uh, Beyond the Hills and graduation and even RMN were um, uh, designed starting from things that I've read in the press. And uh, what is important and what I'm trying to tell, you know, um, younger filmmakers when they are looking for advice, when they develop something is to make sure that what they develop is very well designed and written from the beginning. And this is why this stage of development is very important and it's important to have some support during this period because um, the film is as good as the screenplay was. It can be maybe a, a bit better than the screenplay, but very often if the screenplay was not well designed, the film is not going to be better. So it's really important to spend some time and to make sure that you have a period in which you think very well about the screenplay, you talk to people, you talk to tutors, you talk to your colleagues, you go on the, on the um, in, in that area where you need to investigate and you make sure that you know what you're talking about and that everything is crafted so that you can move on to the next step. And sometimes uh, there are some development supports in different countries, but very often they are um, not really very generous because these countries do not have enough means. And this is why it's uh, always helpful to get this kind of wider European support. And ideally, it's always good to come up with this kind of slate of several projects that might uh, put together, you know, a, a, a broader aspects uh, respecting the integrity of every other filmmaker. And it's something that we did in the past and we tried doing. Uh, we tried to find, you know, a few common elements, but to respect everybody else's integrity and to develop slates of projects because out of them, some good films might be developed. Absolutely. Uh, to having a lineup, um, it's what makes industry. Uh, myself in Spain, we are promoting in Catalonia the slate funding to having us, because you have more to choose, more freedom, um, more possibility to, to be risky. And Valentina, it's promoting not only slate, if Romanian companies can, can, can fulfill the legitimate criteria, the mini slate, which is extremely attractive for Romanian producers. I have one last question because it goes fast. And it's about, now you, you, you talk about how you choose the subjects and about how script has to be perfect before going to producing. How are you using in your movies that are really sometimes tough, difficult because they're confronting the spectator? Humor, how you use humor, because you have humor and it's, it's very subtle in how in a very difficult situation, always there is there the, the glimpse 
of uh, humor. And this is something that, uh, as a close question, I would love, as a, as a film, film, not as a media guy or as a, as, a, as a moviegoer, I would love to know. I started by making comedies. My first film was a comedy. Then uh, after four months, uh, we, we did Tales from the Golden Age, which was quite a popular comedy. Uh, this year, after producing and making a lot of very serious films in the last years, you know, talking to the audience, I decided that it's time for another com comedy. So next year, we're going to shoot Tales from the Golden Age 3. But, you know, there's something about humor. Um, humor is a way of looking at life. If you have humor, you can use it in the film. There's one condition. You should never comment what you show. The humor relies in the way the spectators are the direct witness of what you see on screen. And that's the kind of humor that I practice. If you identify situations which have the potential of being funny and you manage to abstain from making any comments and you just quote them as you found them. And if you know where are the right accents, because as you know, humor is like somehow telling a good story in which you prepare for some sort of ending. So you need to know where the accents are. But uh, if you're a storyteller and you have humor in your regular life, you can do some sort of comedies which are still meaningful because that's important for me, not only to make this kind of comedies that uh, are very, very popular, but which at times can be, I don't know, uh, quite simple. But I think that even in comedies, you, you, you can have a different level. You can have comedies about how, I don't know, uh, uh, humor can help you sometimes in life in coping even with the difficulties of life. Humor is saving us always from difficult situations and we as people who lived in communism know better than anybody that this is what saved us. This is an excellent uh, answer to this uh, end. We have time to wrap up. Uh, Valentina, um, if you want to say something else to Christian, uh, on my side, uh, I would like to thank you for accepting this joint venture activity of our business to audience with filmmaker Christian Mungiu. Uh, thank you, Valentina. Anything else on your side? Gracias, Alex, and to your excellent team. And oh. to Christian, mulțumesc mult for the great cinema that you have offered not only to us, but to the whole world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Same here. Uh, since I see four months, I fell in love of your movies as a movie goer. I am lucky to work for media. Your movies have been supported somehow uh, in distribution, as we talk about it. Thank you for accepting this interview and for being those, these days in Barcelona. And for all of you, follow us in our channel YouTube for more in this B2A or other activities. On behalf of Valentina Miu and uh, myself, Creative Media, uh, Creative Media Desk uh, Romania and Creative Media uh, Desk Catalunya. Thank you very much. Mulțumesc mult. Thank, Thank you. you.